All right. Well, welcome. Good morning. I'm so excited that we have with us today Senator Cortez Masto, who is from the wonderful state of Nevada, and we hear it's snowing out there today. So that's great news. <laughs> Thanks for taking time to speak with us this morning about your work with healthcare and privacy and the importance of federal legislation there. Just so you know, we've done a lot of work with the Center for Democracy and Technology on Privacy. Um, we've got a large grant from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, and we recently um, have created a framework for consumer health data and how to protect consumer health data right now. Um, so we're primarily focused on data that's not covered by HIPAA. Um, and there's a wealth of data out there right now in healthcare that's just not covered by HIPAA, but you know, collected in all of these mobile apps and used in all sorts of ways. We've seen that all throughout COVID as well. And, and for good reason, we know that data needs to be collected. Um, but this is something that we're concerned about and we feel like there should be some sort of legislation to help strengthen privacy protections. Um, I know that you introduced the Digital Accountability and Transparency to Advance Privacy Act, or the Data Act, if I got that right, which allows consumers to consent. And I think most of the folks in our audience understand that that means you know, opting in or opting out. And it also gives new authority to states, attorneys generals, and the FTC um, by you know, levying these civil penalties. One of the things that we've really struggled with is how do you enforce this? So could you talk a little bit about kind of how you envision the enforcement of these rules and what that might look like? Well, first of all, thank you for having this conversation. I so appreciate all the good work that you all do. And so happy and excited to, to join you, Jen. Let me say this as, as a former attorney general, right? As well as somebody who's worked closely with the FTC and now in my role as the Senate, uh, the goal really has been, how do we understand now the change around this use of data that is being uh, collected um, and the information and what are the protections for the consumer? How do we uh, make sure that there's a role for the consumer to play, a role for businesses to play? And what, what, how do we define this data and what, how do we ensure there's no discrimination, right? But there's reasonable use of it. So it's a combination. You're trying to find this balance at the end of the day. And that was really my role and my goal with this Data Privacy Act was really the focus was how do we start looking at this data in a different, from a different prism in, in, or a different view? And what do we need to do to give, in, in my role now as a Senator, maybe the FTC who, who has enforcement already over under section five unfair and deceptive trade practices, but we have to define it and broaden it a little to include this new age of data. Right. So how do we give them guiding principles really is what I was looking for, guiding principles where they can engage in rulemaking. So everybody knows from the businesses to the consumer what the rules are um, and that then you follow those kind of the rules that have been set. And if they violate those rules and that's when the FTC or that's when the AGs would come in um, to engage. And that's really what we have here. And so I really started from that premise and then started looking at, okay, what, what, what do we, who, who, what types of businesses and what type of data and from a consumer protection point of view and a consumer point of view, how do we give the consumer more control over their data, particularly sensitive data? And you know that very well. Um, how do we give them more control, but not overburden them? So there's got to be this role that the businesses play for more transparency, giving the consumer more information, make it concise, understandable, readable about uh, the, the, the data that they're utilizing. It has to be for a legitimate business purpose. It can't be used to discriminate or, or used deceptively. But it also gives that consumer control to know, okay, um, I, 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 here's times when I opt in uh, and here's times when I give consent. Very easily to say to a consumer, Listen, if they're going to, if this business has a legitimate purpose for some of your personal data, your sensitive data, then you give them consent to do so, to use that data. That's very easy. Uh, and so we're defining that, the kind of the realm of the data into sensitive data when, when a business would have to get the consent from the consumer. Uh, otherwise, the, you know, the other options would be the businesses. Um, then get, go ahead and, and engage in a legitimate business as long as they're collecting data that's not sensitive, mm -hmm. but give the consumer the uh, understanding of how that data is going to be used. Mm -hmm. But it also gives the consumer the ability to say to that business, okay, what data are you collecting? Is it accurate? Can I delete it? Can I change it? 
Um, and it, but but working with the businesses, right? Because there is there is a need for the collection of this data at times. Uh, for so many reasons. And we want to find that balance between the two. And that's really the goal here mm-hmm. is to give a kind of like a, uh, through this Data Privacy Act, uh, just general principles. So then the FTC can engage in rulemaking, which we know then brings the businesses in, the consumer advocates in, everybody coming together, defining what this new world looks like when we're collecting data, including that sensitive data and what the enforcement will be at the end of the day. That's very simply, that's what it does. So there's thousands of companies out there collecting mm-hmm. data and using data, and it's just so hard to track what everybody's doing. So you ultimately see this as kind of the state attorney generals kind of driving this um, oversight and enforcement at the state level. Using no, I don't. Federal- Actually, no, I don't. Yeah. So let me let me jump yeah. back here. Yeah. So for purposes of just in general, the enforcement of unfair deceptive trade practices. Yeah. Um, so the FTC has it at the federal level under Section 5. All the AGs that I know in their states have a state version of that. Right. And so that's why we work in conjunction with one another. There's state laws, there's federal laws, and usually the state AGs are focusing on unfair and deceptive trade practice that violate state laws. And at the federal level, they're doing the same thing when there's a the FTC is doing the same thing when there's a violation at the federal level. Right. What this is doing is taking, because we haven't really opened the door for that how you define um, uh, unfair and deceptive trade practices in the realm of data privacy and data collection. All this do, is doing is saying to the FTC, uh, here's how we want to give you guiding principles to start looking at how do you incorporate this whole new world of collecting data and mm-hmm. data privacy so that you can allow businesses to engage and, and continue to collect this data, but you give some protections to the consumer as well. Right. That's all it does. And so uh, what I have found is as the feds and as these laws are um, broadened or they are, uh, there's rulemaking that you find this balance between businesses and consumers in this space, you usually will find in the states will follow similar, similar path of legislation that has been already taken up at the federal level. Now, with that said, there may be states already that have taken this this jump and define data for themselves. Mm-hmm. I know Nevada has done that to some extent when I was AG, but there needs to be this this commonality here because I do get this, I do get the, under, and I really appreciate the fact that businesses, you know, are, are also concerned if they are doing work at a national level, there's different laws in different states right. Uh, right. and how they address this. And so the goal here is to try to, to work through all of this. So everybody's understanding um, with respect to the data that we're defining how we enforce it. So no bit, so the businesses uh, really aren't challenged. And at the end of the day, the consumer also knows um, that we are defining this based on the data itself and the type of data, not who holds the data. Right. So this is a really tough area. And we work with mm-hmm. a lot of tech companies and a lot of consumer advocacy groups, and it's always hard to kind of find consensus here. So the baseline authority for the FTC is really all that kind of holds these county uh, companies mm-hmm. accountable right now to adhere to these privacy policies. So I'm wondering what advances, is, you know, with this new Congress, there's all of this talk about privacy right now. We all know the history of what happened in the last uh, two years. You know, what kind of advances do you think Congress can make now with respect to kind of some type of comprehensive data privacy legislation? We know that that's not, you know, the number one priority <laughs> right now for this Congress. COVID certainly is. But do you see, you know, any advances being made in this next Congress or baby steps, you know, I mean, five years from now? I mean, how long is this going to take till we get to some federal legislation? Well, I, I, here's what I am hopeful as I'm talking with my colleagues is, yes, we start, particularly starting with the Committee of Jurisdiction in the Senate, which is the Commerce Committee, that we start having this discussion and we start holding hearings. We pull businesses in, we pull consumer advocate groups in, and we start defining this. I, you know, I've got my legislation out there. I know my colleagues, um, Senator Schatz is looking at some, uh, uh, Maria Cantwell, I know um, uh, Senator Wicker, there's a number of senators that are, are, are looking at this space. We now have to start having the hearings. We need to pull the experts in. We need to have the FTC there. We need to have the businesses, the consumer, like I said, the consumer advocacy groups. And let's just have this conversation. 
I know we started a little bit of over the last four years, we never finished it. Right. And so we have to engage it. We have to define it and goes back to defining these guiding principles. It is a, it's not an, obviously an easy area um, to legislate uh, in. And so we have to start hearing from the experts and figuring out how we get this done. Because let me just say this, uh, you know, on, on commerce is one committee of jurisdiction where we have to start looking at this, but I'm on banking Right. Uh, the banking committee. This is an area I'm looking at in the financial sector as right. well. So it, it's, it, 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 it covers so many different areas. And I think it's time we just have this discussion and start figuring this out um, and, and defining and giving these guiding principles. I believe that's what we should be doing at a federal level, giving guiding principles uh, around this space of data privacy. Right. And what we found is it's just really difficult to distinguish now what's health data and what's not health data. It's all really consumer data. <laughs> well, um, it is. Yeah. Can I just say one thing? Because you're absolutely right. And I think this is part of the challenge. I know, you know, as an AG, very familiar with the HIPAA laws. Right. Um, and what we have defined is what we have said is we're going to define privacy around who holds the data versus right. what type of data it right. is. So we need to start looking differently at the data. And that's why. For me, it's starting with, okay, what's the sensitive data? What is, what is the data that every consumer would have concerns about that information getting out, how it's being used, uh, and work with the businesses and how we protect that sensitive data? Maybe that's where we start first right. and how that sensitive data is being uh, protected and what are the privacy laws around that? I, I think, you know, we really share that perspective in terms of our framework that we're releasing. So, and we are very, very interested in hearings and, and continuing this discussion. So it's so wonderful to hear you talk about that. Let me just shift a tiny bit because we are all right now immersed in COVID. <laughs> um, and, you know, all the technology companies, all the healthcare companies, of course, we're all focused on COVID right now and how we can use technology um, to really support addressing the pandemic. And we know that this really includes the need for gathering large amounts of information across the country. Um, and we know that there are very limited resources, particularly in public health around collecting data and having technology. We just don't um, have that structure right now in public health. Um, can you talk a little bit about your state? So what needs does Nevada have related to kind of resources for data and technology to address the pandemic? Um, you know, is there a need for federal legislation to help support public health, you know, in terms of gathering data and technology? Just, you know, give us some examples about what Nevada looks like and how federal legislation could possibly address it. Sure, thank you. Well, a couple of things. Let me just put in perspective uh, for purposes of folks uh, to understand the impact the pandemic has had, not just across the country. In Nevada, it's been devastated because our main revenue generator is hospitality-based industry, right? The service sector, from trade shows to conventions to gaming, uh, hospitality in general. And uh, as we all know, when people are sheltering in place, uh, businesses are shutting down, nobody's traveling. That has had a major impact uh, on our state, our revenue. Now that revenue is important because if we are going to continue to uh, address the pandemic to make sure that people are getting tested, that they get their vaccines, that we are um, keeping track of all of the information, we need the money for the technology, right? To, to be able to collect that data, to understand it, to collate it, um, and then utilize it to understand what still needs to be done. So because the revenue has been a cut and because we are challenged, our technology systems are, uh, are, are being challenged. Much of the technology that we use in the state of Nevada is really old technology, it's antiquated, right? I think not every state is like this. Some are, however, you know, really uh, just antiquated technology that we need to upgrade and update. And so we are dealing with the pandemic at the same time trying to kind of uh, what they say, uh, build the plane while we try to fly it, right? So that, that's the challenge I think we have. I, other states I, I, I'm hearing have the same challenges. With that said, that is the purpose uh, for the COVID relief packages that we have passed is getting that money into our states so that they can address the healthcare piece of the pandemic, but also the, the, the data collection, the technology that they need to address and understand the implications and impact of the pandemic to overcome some of the disparity that we see. Um, so it, it's a challenge right now. Now add to that, um, 
not just in Nevada, but we are sharing this data, this healthcare data across the country now with the yes. federal government, right? Because yes. we all are trying to understand uh, who has the, who has it, uh, the maybe tested positive for it. How do we get the tests out there? How do we get the vaccines? Who's had the first dose? Who's had the second dose? Where's their disparate treatment of healthcare? I know I've seen it in my state of, uh, amongst uh, communities of color. So there's so much going on and this data that we do have is being shared across the country. Mm -hmm. How do we protect it? Uh, and that is the impetus of another bill that I have. And I have uh, one of my uh, uh, Senate colleagues, Deb Fisher, has joined me on this. And this is really about privacy and uh, supporting privacy enhancing technology. And the bill is promoting digital privacy. Um, it's a di promoting di digital privacy technology act. And what it really does is supports National Science Foundation on more research and funding to figure out how we um, really develop this privacy enhancing technology that can then be incorporated into our businesses, into our state functions to protect this data. And so that's a piece of this that I think is so important. We, I actually pulled that out of my um, Privacy Act uh, and just really focused on that piece of it to get that moving um, because I think it's going to be, it's so important for our businesses to have access to this technology. If we're saying, listen, we want you to uh, protect this data, but there's no technology to help them do it. Um, really, we're putting them in a difficult situation. So part of, part of the other bill that I have is to work at the federal level. Is let's, let's work and figure out how we develop this um, technology that helps us protect this data and we give it then to our businesses and work with our businesses so they can incorporate that, including our state governments where we know collect so much of this data around individual healthcare. Absolutely. And that sounds mm -hmm. like a really important piece of legislation. And then, you know, one final question we heard President Biden, it's interesting to say a new president's name, <laughs> President Biden, um, talk about, you know, the need to really pass this COVID legislation quickly and um, that he hoped to get bipartisan support, but we also know, you know, how it need, I mean, we're all um, suffering and we're at an incredible lack of resources around the country. What are your thoughts in terms of um, bipartisan support for this and how long it might take to, um, how long we have really to push this through? Well, I know just on the most recent um, COVID relief package we passed, was it, it was to be a bridge um, yeah. because I know unemployment is going to run out in March, March 14th. That's the deadline now under the, the new relief package. So we have to do something. I can tell you just in my state, just what I was telling you about the hospitality industry, we're not going to come out of this in the next two months. We literally, it's going to take us time to come out of it. I have the second highest unemployment rate in the country. I have so many people that have been devastated in my state because we've had to shut down our businesses. So it's going to take us time to, to come out of it. Um, I believe, um, after talking with some of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, there is support uh, really for addressing this pandemic and looking to see what else needs to be done. Uh, and I'm hopeful that as we move forward with the Biden administration package, that they're going to recognize that more states still need to address this pandemic and come out of it. And we're all going to work together to get that done. I, I'm hopeful. I know there's bipartisan uh, talk right now. You know, the group that of senators that's, that really kind of kickstarted the last COVID relief package are meeting now and talking with them. Um, I know that um, there is an opportunity to, to work together to move forward, but we have to. Uh, I just, it just, it is a must. I, I know, you know, unfortunately, um, the last COVID relief package, uh, my Republican colleagues didn't want to support more funding for state and local government, but I can tell you in my state, we need it. I'm hearing it not just from my state, but from my local governments, both in in our rural and urban areas. It, there still is a need and we just, we have to invest in, in that need right now because everybody is dealing with this pandemic. Well, we wish you the best of luck with that. And I wanna thank you again so much, Senator, for your time this morning. Um, we truly appreciate it. Thank you, Jen. Thank, thank you and good luck with the rest of the conference.